Imagine a world where the hum of everyday life could be transformed into a source of clean, renewable energy. Picture the quiet vibrations of sound waves, those invisible oscillations that surround us, being harnessed to power our homes, gadgets, and even cities. This isn't science fiction. It's the cutting edge of energy innovation. Welcome to the world of microsonic energy. As the world grapples with the challenges of climate change and the need for sustainable energy sources, scientists and engineers are seeking out new ways to generate power from unconventional sources. One of the most promising frontiers is microsonic energy, a breakthrough technology that taps into the potential of sound waves to generate electricity. The concept of converting sound waves into usable energy might sound futuristic, but it's grounded in solid science. By utilizing the principles of piezoelectricity, resonance, and efficient energy storage, a microsonic energy device can harvest energy from sound vibrations. In this hands-on guide, we'll take you step-by-step -step through the process of building your own microsonic energy device demonstrating how this technology could revolutionize the way we think about energy. Before we dive into the process of building your device, it's important to understand the core components that make up a microsonic energy device. These devices are designed to capture the energy present in sound waves, particularly low-frequency sound waves, and convert it into electrical energy. Here's a closer look at the essential components. The heart of the microsonic energy device is the piezoelectric transducer. This component is responsible for converting mechanical vibrations, in the form of sound waves, into electrical energy. Piezoelectric materials, such as quartz or certain ceramics, generate a small electrical charge when subjected to mechanical stress. When sound waves hit the transducer, it bends or vibrates, creating an electric charge that can be harvested. The resonator chamber is designed to amplify the sound waves before they reach the piezoelectric transducer. It works by trapping sound waves in a confined space, allowing them to resonate or vibrate at a specific frequency. This is crucial because certain frequencies of sound produce more energy than others. The chamber's design plays a key role in enhancing the device's overall efficiency. Once the transducer has converted the sound waves into electricity, the energy needs to be stored for later use. The energy storage unit typically consists of a rechargeable battery or capacitor, which can store the electrical energy generated by the device. Depending on the scale of your microsonic energy device, this storage unit can vary in size and capacity. This component manages the flow of electricity from the transducer to the storage unit. It regulates the voltage and current to ensure that the energy is stored efficiently and safely. Power management circuits are crucial for preventing energy loss and ensuring that the device works within optimal parameters. Finally, the components of the device need to be housed in a durable, protective enclosure. The enclosure not only protects the delicate internal parts from damage, but also ensures that the device remains functional in various environmental conditions. Depending on the design, this could be a simple plastic casing or a more sophisticated metal housing for better protection and heat dissipation. Building the Microsonic Device Step-by-step -step guide Now that you understand the core components of a microsonic energy device, it's time to dive into the hands-on process of building one. Below, we'll guide you through each step of the process, from gathering your materials to assembling the device and testing it for functionality. Step one is to gather your materials. Before you can begin building your device, you'll need to gather all the necessary components. Here's a list of what you'll need. Piezoelectric transducers, such as PZT or quartz crystals, Resonator chamber, could be a 3D printed or custom designed plastic or metal chamber. Rechargeable battery or capacitor, to store generated energy. Power management circuit, voltage regulators, diodes, capacitors, etc. Amplifier circuit, 
to boost the small electrical signal from the transducer. Enclosure, plastic or metal housing, wires, soldering iron and solder for assembling the components, sound source, such as a speaker or sound generator to test the device, multimeter for testing electrical output, tools, soldering iron, screwdriver, 3D printer, optional for creating a custom resonator chamber, multimeter for measuring the voltage and current, heat shrink tubing or electrical tape for insulation, drill for making holes in the enclosure for wiring. Step 2 is assemble the resonator chamber. The resonator chamber is crucial for amplifying sound waves. If you're building this part from scratch, you may want to design a chamber that resonates at the frequencies you expect to capture. For simplicity, you can start with a pre-made tube or casing. The size and shape of the chamber will depend on the frequency range you plan to target. Four low frequency sounds, like those from industrial machines or engines. A larger, longer chamber might be more effective. You can also experiment with different materials for the chamber. Metal chambers tend to resonate better at certain frequencies, while plastic might be easier to work with. Once you have your chamber ready, the next step is to attach the piezoelectric transducer. The transducer should be mounted securely at a location within the chamber where sound waves will strike it effectively. For best results, position the transducer at a point of maximum vibration within the resonating chamber, which can be determined through experimentation. Step 3 is to install the power management circuit and storage unit. Next, connect the piezoelectric transducer to the power management circuit. This circuit ensures that the electricity generated by the transducer is properly regulated before being stored in the energy storage unit. Now connect the transducer to the circuit. Solder the leads of the transducer to the input of the power management circuit. The circuit will need to convert the small electrical output from the transducer into a usable form for storage. Use a diode to prevent reverse current flow and a capacitor to smooth out fluctuations in voltage. Install the energy storage unit. Connect the output of the power management circuit to the rechargeable battery or capacitor. Ensure the battery or capacitor is of sufficient capacity to store the energy generated. You can also integrate a charging circuit to ensure the battery is charged safely and efficiently. Step 4 is enclose the device. Once the core components are assembled, place them inside the protective enclosure. This will protect your device from external elements while keeping the internal parts secure. Fit the components into the enclosure. Position the resonator chamber, power management circuit, and energy storage unit inside the housing. Make sure all components are securely fixed and that wiring is neatly organized to prevent short circuits. Drill holes in the enclosure for any necessary external connections, such as a charging port or output terminal. Seal the enclosure. Once everything is in place, close the enclosure and seal it. Use screws or clips to ensure a tight, secure fit. Step 5 is testing and optimization. With the device fully assembled, it's time to test its functionality. Initial testing. Power up the device and use a sound source, like a speaker or a tuning fork, to generate sound waves near the resonator chamber. Use a multimeter to measure the voltage and current produced by the piezoelectric transducer. If the output is too low, you may need to fine-tune the resonator chamber or adjust the transducer's placement. Fine-tuning. Experiment with different materials for the resonator chamber to see which ones produce the highest energy output. Adjust the placement of the transducer to optimize energy capture. You may also experiment with different frequencies of sound to see which ones yield the best results. Optimization. Once you're satisfied with the performance, you can begin optimizing your device for maximum efficiency. This could involve tweaking the design of the resonator chamber or upgrading the power management circuit for better energy regulation. 
The potential applications of microsonic energy are vast. In its current form, microsonic energy devices can power small electronics, such as LED lights, sensors, and wireless devices. By capturing low-frequency sound from industrial machinery, these devices could potentially generate enough power to contribute to the electrical grid, making it an exciting option for renewable energy sources. Looking ahead, ongoing research and development in microsonic technology could lead to devices that are more efficient, capable of capturing higher frequency sound, and even scalable to power larger systems. As materials and manufacturing techniques continue to improve, the possibilities for microsonic energy seem limitless. The field of microsonic energy is still in its infancy, but it holds incredible promise. By building your own microsonic energy device, you're not just creating a functional piece of technology. You're contributing to the future of clean, sustainable energy. Whether you're a hobbyist, a student, or an engineer, there's room for innovation and improvement in this exciting field. So, gather your materials, start building, and join the microsonic energy revolution. Who knows? Your device could be the next big breakthrough in renewable energy.